Hey guys, welcome back to Cyberhack. If you're new to the channel and you love the content I've been putting out or you've seen a past video and you haven't subscribed yet, please do that right now because it really helps me and I try to do as much as I can to help you back because you're here for a reason and it's because you want to land a job in cybersecurity. I'm going to try and do my best to do that because I am currently a manager. I'm going to try and do my best to do that because I am currently a manager that's hiring for people to fill roles. And I kind of see what's out there and what I nitpick and choose to get people hired or sit through an interview at minimum. So with that being said, so today I actually did an experiment on LinkedIn. I created a new job post that didn't cost me anything and I was flooded with so much applicants. So I want to go through the details of it with you. Uh, before I even begin that, the one thing that I noticed with creating these jobs is like, we don't even need HR or a recruiter anymore. Everything is like done seamlessly for you. And I'm going to explain that in a little bit what I mean with in regards to it. So let me just show you guys really quick what I'm talking about. So I am on my LinkedIn currently right now. Now, the job posting that I have is on pause because it reached a limit of 50 applicants, which is pretty crazy, right? I mean, 50 is still a lot, but if you want to get more than that, you actually have to promote it. Now, I didn't promote it, but let me just show you the details of this job. Cybersecurity engineer, no details whatsoever as far as the level, right? I just put it out there to see who would bite. And lo and behold, plenty of you guys did. So let's go over the job description. I have 51 applicants. I had 152 views. Now, mind you, I posted this within like last night, actually. I was testing this last night. I even had a friend log in and look at the post and he actually applied too. But, you know, everything was just so automated that it's like you don't even need to think. Now, I can see why companies would come on here and post a job on LinkedIn and you see the requirements are so out of touch with what's considered a beginner position or entry level position. And I finally understood why that's happening. So let's go over right here. Uh, so this entire description, I did not even write. I didn't even look at it. Well, I did look at it, but I didn't write any of it. I just approved it because the first thing that you do when you create a job posting, LinkedIn will ask you if you want the AI to generate a description based on the title of the position that you're hiring for. So here I said cybersecurity engineer. That's the only thing I typed in and I selected within the United States. So there was some criteria, right? So let's just look at the settings really quick. Uh, I actually had turned on. Well, I didn't turn on any of this. This is automatically turned on for you, right? rate applicants you message as a good fit so if they scan through their requirements or their profile and their resume and they deem it as a good mm -hmm. fit they'll actually email them which is crazy right they also categorize people who are not a fit and i looked at their profiles and i couldn't determine what it was that it was not considered a fit so there's a high potential when you're applying for these jobs that you may fall into the category of not a fit and as soon as you're not a fit you won't be shown as a list of candidates that you know, that qualify for that position. You'll still be there only, only if the person like myself goes in there and says, let me see who are the not fits, right? So that's a little crazy that, that they do that. I'm not sure where. And I, when I did go back and review the person that was not a fit, uh, he did have some cybersecurity experience. So I wasn't sure what it was that was throwing the algorithm off or the AI off. So let's go here and uh, rate applicants who are out of the country as not a fit. So you can send a rejection email right off the bat. Uh, right now, this is turned on and that I, that's not even something you can choose. So uh, if they're not in the country and they're not a fit, they're, they're automatically, I guess, uh, rejected or not shown to you. Uh, and then also you send rejection emails. You can turn that on as well. Uh, rate applicants who don't meet the required screening criteria is not a fit. I, I guess, I mean, you could turn that on, but this is default off. And then the generic email that you would get, and most of you guys are probably have seen because I have seen it many times myself. Thank you for the interest in the cybersecurity engineer position as a cyber hack in the United States. Unfortunately, we will not be moving forward with your application, but we appreciate your time and interest in cyber hack. That's me, guys. I'm cyber hack. All right. So let's go into the job info and we can actually. So let me just go back a little bit because we have reached the max applicants for this free job posting this one free job posting on linkedin your option after that to receive more is to actually uh, start a promotional uh, where you can actually get more so you can see here he says promote for free now i didn't try this yet i didn't want to go deeper i wanted to kind of just sit here uh, and talk about this process first before i go any further and do more experiment on linkedin to see where your application actually lands when you apply for a job so start free trial uh, activate a three-day trial for um, 
to reach more qualified candidates. And I'm sure, I'm sure that comes with a price tag. So let's, let's just take a quick look. Um, promote with a free trial limited offer, $0 until April 12, uh, 2024. And uh, you will receive an email reminder before your trial ends. You will pay $88 per day after trial ends. So after the trial ends in April 12th, uh, that's Friday, this coming Friday, and close your job or edit your budget anytime. All right, so this is what you get with it. So it's $88 after this Friday. That's pretty expensive to hire someone, uh, in my opinion. But but that limits that limits the whole, uh, you know, requiring HR to actually do something for you, right? I mean, that's that's insane. But like, I don't need a whole department anymore to put up a job posting, put the job description together and put the qualification and the certifications that I want to someone to uh, hire. Now, during this whole process, which I'm still going to show you guys, I was able to, you know, there was criteria that you can ask additional questions like uh, was there uh, like you want someone that has a college degree, um, you know, X years of experience, certain certifications, like the list just keeps on going down. And I'm pretty sure if you apply for certain jobs on LinkedIn, you probably have answered those questions one time or another. It'll ask you something like, and you can put custom questions like, have you ever had SOC experience? Have you ever had like any SIM experience or EDRs or whatever it is? And you can ask all these questions. But the whole point was that it just, it was so seamless. It was just easy. It was like right there as a hiring manager, a hiring company. Now, I do want to go back to something that I kind of spoke about in the past about this whole, you know, why are entry level jobs posting about, you know, requiring CISSP, CEH and all these certifications, right? Now, I finally understood why and how it's happening. So stick with me on this one. But I want to show you guys right here. Remember the job description. I did not put any input whatsoever. I, the AI took the whole thing over and wrote this whole summary of job description and the qualifications. Now, I, you know, this this post would probably not be searchable anymore because it has reached its limit. But let's go through the qual uh, qualifications right now. Now, mind you, I did not have to say anything about this position besides naming it. All right. So because I said cybersecurity engineer, it automatically took all the highlighted details of that criteria of that job and posted it here as a job description automatically based on AI's information, which is crazy. So application security, security, uh, cybersecurity and network security skills. I looked at it and was like, hell yeah, I want that. I want someone that knows all that information, security and vulnerability assessment skills. Yes. Right. Experience in identifying and resolving security vulnerabilities. Who wouldn't want that? That's the whole purpose of this job too. knowledge of security, best practice and compliance requirements. Yes. Uh, ability to analyze and respond to security incidents. Holy cow. This is the perfect person, right? Excellent problem solving and criteria, uh, critical thinking skills. Whew, I wish we all had that uh, strong written and verbal communication skills. Oh, that's always a given. That's always a requirement. I suck at writing and my verbal skills are horrible ability to work independently as a or and as part of a team. Whoa, that's like a dream candidate able to work by yourself and work as a team. So bachelor's degree in computer science, cybersecurity or related fields. Now, this is the part. These last two bullets are not things that I necessarily would really care for. But AI is thinking that I care for it, right? Having a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity. Now, what if this person had a two year college cybersecurity background? Would that qualify? Would that automatically omit this person? And I'm going to go through those details with you. All right. So the last bullet point is what's the craziest and what we have all seen and always see on every job posting that's even labeled as entry level certifications such as CISSP, CISM or CEH are a plus. Now, granted, they say it's a plus, not a requirement, a plus. But how? How can you for entry level? Now, again, I can create a whole bunch of job postings. I can label it entry level, junior level. And it'll probably AI will throw on the same job description. And that's what you guys are all seeing, including myself. So what is it that we're doing right now as a hiring manager? And what is it that you're doing as a candidate applying to these jobs? Let me tell you guys something. When I first put the job up right within seconds of a, its approval from LinkedIn, and it didn't take that long. It took maybe a couple minutes. I was, was sure it was going to take a whole day for someone to review this. But I'm pretty sure uh, not a human being is actually looking at it and saying, OK, this looks good. This looks not. Mm -mm. AI is probably just scanning through the whole thing. No, nothing outstanding. So we'll prove it. Let them go. Uh, I mean, it's it's all a marketing uh, process with LinkedIn because the easier it makes for me. And and right now, my experience with it is I can post a job and I can find an applicant within seconds of posting it because it gets approved within minutes. And then all of a sudden, as soon as it got approved, I got my first candidate, my first applicant. I'm like, is this a bot? This guy had no experience. 
but he listed everything under like some school, a reputable college, and he has this degree that associates with cybersecurity. I'm looking at it as like, how is this guy so quick to apply? And then on top of all that, if you look at my job description or you look at my job posting, I have nothing of significance that even relates anything about this company, how much you're making, or like, what is it that you're actually, you know, be located, right? I, I think I said full remote, but I can't even find that on the job posting now. It just says full time uh, information services. Uh, see, I, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. Oh, I did. I did say it. I did say full time remote, but I selected that as an option. I did not write this. All right. I can't uh, apparently in order for me to show you the details of what was being asked of me as a hiring manager or a company that was hiring, I would actually have to go back, go back to uh, create a new post because apparently I can't do that anymore. So um, oh, wow. So now it actually tells me uh, 289 estimated monthly applicants because based on the, the, the quantity that I've been getting. And if I click on promote job, it'll just charge this credit card. So uh, I'm probably not going to do that. I don't want to do that because this job is not real, guys. I'm just I'm just testing. So actually, here here it is. Uh, the screening questions. You can actually, oh, now I can't even do it anymore without having to pay. So they're forcing me to constantly uh, promote this job if I really want to uh, see more candidates and do more options to it. So uh, long story short, if I create this free job, I could do everything initially, meaning put in the questions, put in the remote, put in the salary, or I can put the salary within the job description, which some people actually do, uh, and fill in more details within the role description. And then within the qualification, I can edit all that. But if I wanted to kind of go back now and backtrack and do any changes to it, it it's not giving me the full option to make huge modifications to this job posting because it obviously wants you to pay for the promotional, which is $88 after April 12th of this video. Uh, that's within a few days because today's the night. So that's that's where we are right now, guys. Um, I even said in the in the role, in the job description, right? Uh, if you look back, I, I did say junior because I, I labeled it as junior cybersecurity engineer. I, that, that's what I remember. The junior cybersecurity engineer will be responsible for day-to-day -day task. Now, mind you, I have 50 applicants and the 50 applicants, I don't want to show their names and faces because they may potentially be real people and not just bots. but I'm going to tell you right now, out of those 50, I would say more than half of them were way overqualified, meaning they had years of experience uh, and, and you know, certain certifications. I don't need to name all of them, but the big brands that you would say, oh, you need at least three, four, five years of experience in order to attain that certification. These guys were applying to this now, probably because of the fact that it's an easy apply. And most people don't read anymore. So as soon as they see a, a new job posting or a new job listing, they'll just click on easy apply. It takes them like a click or two, and then they're they're straight in and they're applied. And and you have all those you know opportunities to possibly get hired back, right? Because I you know I granted I've been telling people in the past like you know just mass apply to positions, but also mass apply to positions that you actually qualify for and also that you're interested in. Because the worst thing is, uh, besides the fact that, you know, even if they call you back and you have great learning experience because you're going to sit through an interview with someone and interact and you kind of just, you know, get, it's like training, right? Like you, you can't win tournaments without practicing uh, any kind of tournaments, right? You need to practice and, and, you know, you need to warm up and you need to kind of like, you know, prep yourself and get used to it. So sitting through interviews is no different. I mean, you can't expect to be perfect on an interview if you haven't done it in like five years or 10 years, especially if you've been in a position for so long that you never had to interact in that kind of level, speaking to someone that you have no idea who they are for like the first five minutes, right? How do you even relate to this, to, to this person? Because you don't even know what they are, but they know everything about you because you have your resume, you have all your past experience and all your work places that you've been to and they kind of see what industry you've been. It's just, just so much to think about and do. So at the very least, guys, um, one thing I've gotten out of this was if you apply for a job that is not promoted, the max is 50 applicants. And within those 50 applicants, depending on which time that you're applying to, uh, one thing I noticed my inbox was flooded with the applicants individually. As each applicant came in, my email inbox was growing. And the, la the first applicant that you think would be the first on the list is actually on the bottom. Because if I log into my inbox, the last person that applied will be sitting on top. And that's the first one that I actually clicked on to see who it was. And then from that point on, I started going down the list, but I didn't go down the entire 50. What my point is, which is tough, you can't always apply first and it doesn't necessarily mean you'll get the job if you applied last. You, you see what I'm saying? So with non-promotions, you have up to 50 applicants. 
and that gets filled pretty quick. So if you look at job postings and you see like, oh, this job posting has 100 applicants or, you know, 200 applicants, it's a huge list because my opinion, even with 50, I thought it was extreme within the first few, uh, within the first hour, I have 50 applicants. And it was huge ranges of skill sets and levels of people who had a lot of different qualification, red team, blue team, um, SOC auditors and all that, all of it, all of it. So guys, I want to thank you guys again. Uh, hopefully this, this, um, video brought some light into how you're applying, uh, to applications, uh, jobs on LinkedIn. Uh, and it's probably similar across other job boards, which I will do my test as well. So hopefully this was interesting and educational for you. Uh, and I definitely would love to, to hear your comments about this video. Uh, I know it's running a little long, so I'm going to end it here and I'll see you guys again really soon.